guess what I'm doing right now? Well, aside from the obvious, which is, you know, drinking my tea, looking at my pretty garden, listening to my wind chime. I am cooking the perfect roast. Today on My Left Frying Pan, I'm going to teach you how to cook the perfect roast too. Learning how to cook a roast is a wonderful cooking skill. It's easy to do and also it sort of fits into my ultimate plan of getting all of you back into your kitchens cooking. It's so easy. Now, I am so excited to be working with the wonderful people at Canada Beef this week because they're the ones that taught me how to make the perfect roast. Now, you'd think because I was English, Irish, Scottish, you would think I would know how to cook a roast, but here's the deal. My grandma and my mom, they cooked the living daylights out of their roasts. It was like scary. So it wasn't until I was working on Homegrown, the cookbook that I wrote with the Ontario Home Economics Association. And one of the members works at Canada Beef and she contributed to the beef chapter. And she taught me how to cook the perfect roast. And when I saw how she did, it was like, what? Real? Okay, I've got to share this. So whenever I get, you know, something new and wonderful, I really want to tell all of my fans. So this week on My Left Frying Pan, Canada Beef and me, we're going to teach you how to cook the perfect roast. Let's get roasting. There are a couple of really easy steps to roast beef perfection. Number uno, this is huge, a shallow roasting pan. Don't use those big high ones. What happens is that the meat kind of steams. You want it to roast, so you want the heat to be circulating round and round. So you need a shallow pan. It's bye-bye to the high side and hello, Mr. Shallow Guy. Okay, it also needs to be on a rack, all right? You don't want the meat touching the metal of the roasting pan. It has to be above it, so always on a rack. Now, I like to put a kind of a topping on it, and so what I'm going to do, I'm using a recipe out of homegrown, and it's basically horseradish, cracked pepper, and coarse salt. Now, this is how much you would need for a regular roast if you were just cooking it for your family, uh, and the uh, ingredients are just uh, underneath uh, the video. But because I'm having a dinner party for 12, and I want leftovers, I want leftovers. I want to make a soup, I want to make some wraps, I want to make sandwiches. So I bought more than I needed for my company, all right? And I'm hoping that they don't eat the whole thing. It's going to be some fantastic, they might. So um, I'm going to start covering it up with this much horseradish, cracked pepper, and salt, all right? So we're just going to put this on. I've already mixed it up. It's going to start to fall off. Don't worry about that. Um, and try to sort of stick it on as best you can. Um, and if it falls off, it's just going to actually make the jus. You know what? I'm going to use my hands. We're going to get dirty here and just crack them in here like that. All right. Big important step. Always wash your hands before and after you handle any kind of uh, um, meat or fish or poultry. For that matter, for any kind of cooking, you should always wash your hands before. And I've already done that, so we're good. And you're going to cover it up as best you can. You just want to really cover it on the meat surfaces, not anywhere where the fat is because it's not going to penetrate that. Okay, get in there. Oh, this is fun. Okay, so now the next thing is a thermometer. This is hugely important, really, really important. So you have to cook meat to an internal temperature. Now, I like my roast beef medium rare, which is 145 degrees Fahrenheit, but I want to take it out of the oven at around 140. That's really important because it's going to continue cooking while it's sitting on the roasting pan in its timeout. So there's a couple of different kind of thermometers you can use. There's this kind, and this is the kind where you'd have to insert it. You'd have to take the roast out and insert it to check. This is a good thermometer, but maybe not the best pick for roast. This one is a really neat idea because you insert it and it goes inside of the oven with the roast. So you actually can put at your gauge as to whether you want medium, medium rare, rare, whatever. And then, you, but you once again have to continue to check it. But this is genius. So okay, I don't know who came up with this idea, but it must have been a woman. Anyway, so you're gonna stick this probe into the thickest part of the meat without touching a bone, because if you hit a bone, you're going to get a false reading. Bones conduct heat at a, at a different rate than the actual meat does. So don't hit a bone, especially with this prime rib, there's bones in it. And then I'm going to set the internal temperature to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is five degrees less than medium rare. Okay, because when we take it out of the oven, it continues kind of cooking and the temperature will rise. Now, here's the best part. We're going to oven sear it. I say, what? 
<laughs> we're gonna oven sear it. I'm gonna put it in the oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we're gonna let it oven sear for 10 minutes. That's gonna develop browning for good flavor, and it's gonna look fabulous too. And then I'm gonna reduce the temperature down to 275 degrees and cook to your desire to have done this. Now mine's medium rare, so I'm looking at 145 degrees Fahrenheit. And you wanna cook it low and slow for the most even doneness and for the most juicy tender roast. And when this baby goes off, then we've reached the internal temperature of 140 and it's done. For everything you want to know about Canada beef, go to thinkbeef.ca. They've got all your answers to every single one of your questions. The next step to roast beef perfection is a roast beef timeout. Okay, basically, I've got the roast sitting on my carving board. I'm going to loosely cover it with foil. And what happens while it's resting or having its time out is that all the juices kind of redistribute themselves evenly. And then the entire roast is juicy. Don't cover too tightly or the roast will actually steam a bit. And then that affects the crusting on the outside of the roast. So when I serve it, it's going to be perfection on a plate. So now I'm gonna do an au jus, which is a healthier spin on gravy. Basically, it's the drippings that I'm gonna pour into a measuring cup. Voila. I'm speaking French because it's called an au jus. Hello, can you see me anymore? I don't think so. Bonjour, hello. Okay, so you dip that, dump those in there. And then I'm gonna pop this into the refrigerator and what's gonna happen is the fat's gonna solidify and then I'm gonna take it off and then I'm gonna warm this up. This is going to be fantastic on my roast beef. Woo! Now it's time to carve the beef. All right, I'm just gonna show you a little trick here. I'm gonna twirl it around so that you can see it better. Uh, but we wanna remove the bones on a prime rib because it's easier to carve a roast that doesn't have a bone. So if you have a bone in, make sure you're gonna cut it off. Now I'm gonna use my hand because I'm a part chef and I'm just gonna slice the meat away from the bone as close as I can. Now a lot of people like to eat the bone, or not to eat the bone, to chew around the bone and that's fun too, so just keep cutting around. I'm gonna twirl it around again. Oh, I can hardly wait to eat this. And remove the bone. And then I'm gonna slice it into really, really thin slices. Once again, you can use one of these wonderful forks, but because it's had such a good time out, I'm just gonna slice it with my hand. Oh, that is gorgeous. Okay. Thin slices, my friends, makes for the most tender roast. Okay, I know you should never do this, but my company can't see me, and I can't wait. Oh, roast beef perfection. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm coming. Oh my gosh, they're getting all anxious. Okay, so, oh hey, I got changed. Notice I did a little wardrobe change. The pièce résistance is the roast beef, it is ready. I'm going to put the au jus on top. As you see, I have a little bit of the a horseradish uh, crusted over on the there. Voila, okay, I don't know why I'm talking French. And dinner is ready. Woo, here I come. Da 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 da. Woo, that was some kind of fun dinner party. I love my friends, but I thought they'd never go home. Anyway, it's just a credit to me as being a wonderful hostess. Anyway, they didn't eat all the roast, so I've got leftovers. And look what I'm seeing. What I see in this container is, oh my gosh, so many ideas, because I had one roast with multiple meals. Okay, so I fed them last night, and now I'm seeing 
sandwiches au naturel. I'm seeing beef tortilla, which I'm going to make next. Uh, they have a wonderful recipe for beef and barley soup over on their website, thinkbeef.ca, uh, using leftover cooked beef. It's a genius idea. So I want to thank my friends at Canada Beef. Thank you. And uh, thank you for teaching me how to cook the perfect roast because now it's your turn. So I want you to go and uh, leave a comment below with hashtag love Canadian beef. There you go. And tell me what you're going to do with your leftovers once you've cooked your roast beef. Or you can head over onto their website and look at all their recipes. There's so much information there. So, uh, hey, if you're loving my left frying pan, give me a thumbs up below and uh, tell your friends because you know what? This is not your regular cooking show. So until next time, uh, wishing you peace, love, and fiber.